Welcome to Pondering Passages. I'm Kurt Austin, and my good friend Dave Mullins and I are going to be talking about Psalm 31 this week. It's a great psalm. It's a good psalm to talk about because it has everything to do with being trusting God who is faithful to us. And so we want you to be a part of that. We want you to come back right after this beautiful, beautiful musical interlude, and then we will see you then. Passages. Today, my good friend Kurt Austin and I are going to be pondering Psalm 31. Uh, so 31. glad that, yes, so glad 31. that you uh, decided to stick around after the musical interlude to uh, join us. And this is a long psalm, so we're going to have to jump right in. Let's jump right in, Dave. Let's start with the uh, title slide here, Psalm 31, for the choir director, a psalm of David. Uh, pretty simple. I'll take that when you get the next one. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I I wonder for the choir director. I wonder if some of these choir directors get the psalm. They're like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" <laughs> oh, great! Another psalm from David. I am so sick of these. <laughs> Verses one through five say, "O oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be my rock of protection, a fortress where I will be uh, safe." You are my rock and my fortress. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. Pull me from the trap my enemies have set for me, for I find my protection in you alone. I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. There you go. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking, can we can we do the next three verses too as well? Absolutely. We, we always can do that. Verses... Yeah. Uh, six through eight say, I hate those who worship worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love for you have seen my troubles and you care about the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to my enemies, but have set me in a safe place. Very nice. Yeah. And, and it's, there's a, there's a, a very, uh, obvious break between eight and nine. In fact, uh, so much so that some folks uh, or some scholars think that maybe at one point it was two different Psalms that they brought together. Um, but, you know, quite a few yeah. scholars don't believe that that's the case. But anyway, I thought we read through, you know, verse eight then. I feel strongly both ways. You do? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I really did like this Psalm this week because it... Uh, I, it felt almost bipolar in okay. some situations where at yeah. one moment he is all about God's protection and safety and how thankful I am. And then the next minute he's a train wreck, emotional <laughs> train wreck of, you know, the world's out to get me. I can't believe it. And then he turns right back around and goes, and, and it's never like a, but God is right. faithful. Yeah. It's always, uh, you know, it's just like, I, I also thought it was really interesting. Uh, verse, th uh, second part of verse two and then the verse, first part of verse three, be my rock of protection, my fortress. You are my rock and my fortress. You know, I, I yeah. thought that was, it was written very interestingly in several places like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the scholars that really know Hebrew poetry, they're able to really glean a lot of, uh, just a, a lot of meaning out of some of that. Uh, but, you know, we're not, Hebrew scholars, uh, we, you know, we, we know uh, about parallelism a little bit and how the first line will say something and the second line will kind of parallel that, but say it a little differently. But yeah, you're right. Uh, the, the second line, well, verse two, turn your ear to listen to me, rescue me quickly. That would be, mm -hmm. you know, that parallelism and then be my rock of protection, a fortress where I be safe. And then, yeah, you are my rock. So it, it isn't normally what we would do. And as I'm looking at this, it's, you know, I, I wonder about those that put in the uh, the verses. Why didn't they put in verse three? It be my rock of protection. I I don't know. Come on, Kurt, answer me that. I, I don't know. Um, 
I do, but you know, the, the second part of that, for the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. Verse four then starts with actually describing the danger. Yeah. You know, pull me out of the trap my enemies have set. I find protection in you alone. I and I and I I do like this this passage. It's a it's a encouraging passage to read because it's um, I find protection. You are my rock. They're they're very declarative statements. You know, I entrust my spirit in your hand. Um, you are a faithful God. I mean, they're just really nice, solid statements that you can kind of hang your hat on, hang your 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 own hat. Uh, if I say hat again, does that make it more meaningful? It does. Um, no repetition. You know, and now he he does as he's as he's reading writing this, talking about those uh, bad situations. So the trap, the worthless idols that people worship. Um, you it, have seen it, my trouble. It, it you know, there's times when it's almost like I feel like he's trying to build a case on why God should protect him. You know, if you go back, uh, you know, a, a screen to, to verse, uh, what is it, you know, where he says, be my rock of protection. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a request. But then he goes, well, you are my rock and my fortress mm -hmm. for the honor of your name. And then he has this request to pull me from the trap. And he goes, you know, I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me. Again, there's yeah. a request. And then he it's continues kind of a, to build his yeah. case saying, I hate those who worship, worship worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a deeply complex psalm. It's no. it's not really dealing with these terrible uh, or these lofty ideas that are too hard to get a hold of. Right. It's it's it really shoots straight. It's right there, and it really is as I as I read it every. And I I've been I've been so proud of myself. I've been able to read almost every day this week. I miss one day. That is great. Um, it, it's it's been nice. It's been nice. It's yeah. been a it's a good. Um, but it's it's a psalm that really does encourage. Yes, me well, and, at least. And and it kind of is helpful that he does. I mean, it's I don't want to say he's he's waffling, but he he does kind of go back and forth between mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, God, I entrust you my spirit with my spirit, but then he's I I don't know. Is it safe to say that it, it seems like he might not be sure that that God's going to come through for him in some some respects? Let's keep reading to see. Well, see, and then things uh, kind of switch and change. Uh, Verse 9, uh, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and my soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. I That, that verse right there. Oh, yeah. Verse 10. Yeah. Sin has drained my strength. I'm wasting away from within. I am scorned by all my enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. <laughs> what, what a description. <laughs> I am ignored as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. I have heard I have heard the many rumors about me, and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. Yeah, the, you know, I I think I'm I'm trying to remember this psalm or another one, but they're thinking that maybe there there's an illness going on. Uh, you know, I, what was that? It's another, it's another one. one. Yeah, it's I mean, I think you. Another one. Yeah, that's the thing. There's probably more than one, but like yeah, but, I'm dying from grief. But talking it's about so wasting great. away from yeah. within, uh, he does talk about enemies, but sometimes the sickness and the enemies kind of go go together. Uh, so I, I don't always see that, but yet uh, there are some indications that, you know, I'm ignored as if I was dead, as if I was a broken pot. Uh, so who knows? He's going through something. He's having a bad I, day. But bad don't you day. love, don't you love when, you know, they, they run away, they go, they, you know, <laughs> I know <laughs> even my friends are afraid to come near me. And again, that could speak to an illness. Uh, when we were in, well, it could, but it yeah. also could be reality. We, when we were in Sicily, we were working with um, uh, African migrants who had fled um, and had gone up into Sicily across the Mediterranean. And uh, several of them talked about the fact that people would cross the street so that they didn't get close to 
uh, the migrants, that there, there was really a lot of racism there, that they didn't even want to be on the same side of a street with mm. them. And I, that's what I thought of when I read that particular passage. Um, it, it, was, it was fascinating to me. We were sitting on this uh, stone bench in a kind of a court area. And I was talking to these two guys, and they were talking about their situation, their living situation. They were actually the ones who said that people cross the street. People don't want to be seen with them. And a an Italian man walked past and dropped a wallet. Um, just He was like he had just put it in his pocket, but it missed his pocket, and it just hit, yeah. the, hit the ground. And here's a guy who's living in an apartment with no electricity and no running water, um, he's really struggling to feel in a place and he went, Oh, sir, sir. And he, re and he ran over and he picked it up and he handed it to the guy. It was like, man, if you'd waited five more minutes, that guy would have been out of sight and you would have had it. You would have had enough money, but you know, people acted afraid of him and the rumors about who these people are that are in our country, all of that kind of in verse 13, uh, it would be a very scary place. And yet this, he showed some real quality of character by the way yeah. he acted in that moment. It wasn't for my benefit. He was simply responding to a person in need. I thought yeah. that was fascinating. Yeah. It has nothing to do with this passage whatsoever, but that's how my brain works. <laughs> Anything else on on this particular section? Well, uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we, we've got well, yeah. a few yeah. more screens. So uh... yeah, a few more, a few more <laughs> verses, yeah. verse 14 through 18. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying you are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your unfailing love, rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them lie silent in the grave. Silence their lying lips, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Uh... <clears throat> I, you know, I always pause when I see a line like uh, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly, you know, because the psalmist is putting himself in, in the godly category. And I think sometimes, you know, we, we might have difficulty putting ourselves in, in that category. And I wonder if it's because, uh, you know, the psalmist, when he was writing that he actually was godly, you know, that they, they were a little bit more serious about their commitment, their relationship with God than what we are in 21st century uh, Western culture. Uh, you know, the, the line that kind of jumps out with me is verse 15, my future is in your hands. And it's, I, I don't know that we, I mean, we might say that, but I don't know that we believe that uh, because we have so many resources at our, at our disposal. Mm -hmm. uh, so many, uh, you know, uh, nets to catch us. And in his culture, there were probably, uh, in his time, there were a lot, there, there weren't nearly as many. And so if your family was rejecting you, if your friends were rejecting you, if your neighbors were despising you, uh, you really had no safety net at all. And so to say the future is in your hands, uh, was probably completely, completely accurate. And so, you know, the second part of verse 15, you know, rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly, because he knows that if God doesn't do it, he is, he is literally helpless. Yeah. I think uh, there was a, uh, I think made for TV movie years ago called God help, God bless the child. If you ever get a chance to watch it, um, Get out your box of tissues, sit down, and uh, it's it is a tearjerker. Not a, not like a Hallmark made for TV kind of a movie. I mean, it's really it was really well done, but it's um, somebody who doesn't have a lot of safety nets, mm. you know. And and so I think you and I especially are able to look at it from a certain perspective that someone else may not be able to look at. Right. And this this particular passage may. Uh, being able to say, you are my God, my future is in your hands may be kind of tricky sometimes. Yeah. So this this particular passage may not resonate uh, on that side of it, 
because, uh, but maybe maybe even more so because there are fewer nets. Although I would say our sense that we have safety nets is in fact yeah. not accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our future really is in the hands of God. Yeah. Uh, and and we we you know we see these safety nets that we have. We see our bank accounts. We see our, our resources. And really, uh, it's it's all because of the grace of God, and our future is in God's hands. And and it might be you know more difficult for us to see that, but it isn't any less reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's yeah. the fact that we we probably don't like to face that reality, and so especially in a place where you're supposed to be self sufficient. Yes, right. Yes, uh, bootstraps and, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so his prayer is, uh, let your favor shine on your servant, uh, which, you know, we're in, uh, we're in Christmas time. Christmas is mm-hmm. next Sunday. It's not even a week away. And I think of the message of the angels where it says, you know, God's favor, mm-hmm. uh, you know, rest on, on, or his peace rests on those whom he favors. And so, you know, that's a huge thing uh, to be favored by God. And so in your unfailing love, he writes, rescue me. Let your favor shine. That's probably the verse of the, of the whole chapter, probably the whole passage. Let your, I mean, really that oh, sums yeah. up the, the content here. Let your favor shine on your servant in your unfailing love. Rescue me. Yeah. Rescue me. So, all right, let's keep moving. Okay. Um, 19 and 20. How great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you. You lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the watching world. You hide them in the shelter of your presence, safe from those who conspire against them. You shelter them from in your presence, far from accusing tongues. We, yeah, we'll just stop with that. So is this after God answers his prayer? <laughs> It really feels that way, doesn't it? It does, um, you know, because he he's because everything he says here reflects back to what his prayer was at the first part of the the psalm about you know lie, people are lying, they're conspiring yeah. against me, Shelter. and all this, and now it's like he's like, why? How great is the goodness uh, you've stored up for those who fear you? Or is this sometimes as we pray, we get into the midst of the prayer and it's almost like God blesses us or favors us in the midst of praying and causes us to remember that, you know, he still has us, you know, he's still with us. And maybe that. with just that confidence that he's like, you know, how great yeah. is the goodness that you've stored up for those who fear you. And, you know, you hide them, you hide me in the shelter of your presence. You shelter me in your presence, far from accusing tongues. And just this confidence that, he will make it through this. Just can't turn off a preacher once he gets started. Look at him go. You got it, man. <laughs> I had a I had a wonderful opportunity this last week. We had a our small group with our uh, Canadian friends um, that we do online. Wonderful evening. It just a just a, a real blessing. And then we got to get together with our our local small group that we've met with now for six years, um, and just just a you know Christmas dinner. Uh, mm-hmm. on Saturday night. And in both situations, um, I was just reminded of the blessing that they are to our lives. And I had this a real sense of how great is the goodness of God that he has poured out, that you've lavished on those uh, in this group. Now, you know, some people have just lost a family member or they're struggling with the kids that are in certain situations or their, their marriage is, is rife. But God has been present in ways that we just can't even begin. And, you know, he's, he's sheltered them, even in the midst of the rough times, um, he's been present. And it just was a re- constant reminder. I think that's the importance of staying connected. You know, what if you're, if you're joining this, or you're listening to this, watching this, that's great. Get connected to folks mm-hmm. um, who are also trying to seek uh, God along this journey, because there can be times when they're going to need your, your reminder of God's strength and there are going to be times when you need their reminder that God yeah. is strong and yeah. will see you through. Yeah. I'm not, I'm sure that the psalmist didn't intend all of that, but that's tough. That's He's not here to defend himself. Then we're just going to take it and run. Yeah. 
Last, last uh, four verses, verses 21 through 24, say, Praise the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his unfailing love. He kept me safe when my city was under attack. In panic, I cried out, I am cut off from the Lord. But you heard my cry for mercy and answered my call for help. Love the Lord, all you godly ones, for the Lord protects those who are loyal to him, but he harshly punishes the arrogant. So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Amen and amen. In panic, I know. I cried out. <laughs> hey, that's a, you know, we talk about, we do this uh, to help us form our, you know, what's formative about these passages. And so I, that was a question I had, Dave, as I was reading this. Have you ever been in panic where you've cried out like that? I'm sure I have been. You know, it's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, a lot of times we, we go through a lot of difficult situations and we do panic. You know, sometimes that's our first response is panicking. Uh, but then a little while later when the panic subsides and things kind of begin to, to work out, uh, we, we forget how panicked we were. Well, that's true. That is you know, true. But but when I, I saw it, you know, when I see it in panic, I think back to the first part of, of the psalm, and it's like, yeah, that's exactly what he sounded like. You know, my friends are, are walking across, you know, they're running away from me. My family's despising mm -hmm. me. There are people mm -hmm. lying about me. And, you know, I would like to think it was during the prayer that he found God's peace, you know, that peace that passes all understanding, and he had a sense of God's presence, and he actually remembered uh, not just who God was, but who he was in God. Uh, yeah. And I think you see that in verses 21 through 24. Yes. There's kind of yeah. kind of this summary of all of those other things I've said lead me to these, these statements. Yeah. And, and, and calling other people. Do you think verse 24 is also, last week we, we were laughing about, or one week we were laughing about the fact somebody added a little bit. Do you think 24 is an, an addition to this? Some scholar, some uh, scribe just tacked it on? I, I don't I don't know I don't think so because I could see what he's done here is he's he's kind of said you know be strong and courageous and you know all you who put your hope in the Lord because that's who he is because he has mm -hmm. put his hope mm -hmm. in the Lord and he's basically saying you know yeah sometimes you panic and sometimes you only see the negative and sometimes things look so bad that you can't see the light for the darkness but yet if you continue to put your trust in the Lord, uh, things things get better. I, I, you know, I just this was last week. Uh, last 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 ones we talked about. Uh, what is it? Weeping comes in the night. Yeah, it yeah. joy comes in the morning. I I wonder if that's what's going on. The first part of the psalm, it was like late at night. You know, he's looking at all this. <laughs> He's terrified, <laughs> and in the morning, he's like, you know, yes, I, I do hey, trust God. You know, it's not I, that bad. He does have my future in my hands, and he's going to watch over me. And and so then he actually uses that as an encouragement for others who may or may not be going through similar things. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And this was one where every day it wasn't that every day something new popped out. It was every day it repeated the same truth. You know, as as yeah. I read as I read it, it was like, "Yep, there it is. That's the truth." Yep. You know, this is this is it. Um, well, I think it's beautiful. Next week we're going to dive into thirty two, right? Thirty two, um, and so we'll uh, see what that has to say to us. And um, I hope everybody can join us. Follow us and follow us, like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or on our website, uh, PonderingPassages.com. And uh, you can join us there for our writing, our listening, and our viewing. And you can see all of those things. And if you have any comments, we would love to hear them. Yeah. So anything else, Dave, as we, as we say goodbye for the night? I, I think it's time. I think it's time. So we will see you back here next week. And uh, we look forward to it. We'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye.